Welcome. Welcome to our part one of five YouTube video series, getting this Great Lakes biplane back up in the air. We bought this Great Lakes mid-January, and we were initially thinking it was just gonna be, you know, a couple weeks of work, getting it back up airworthy again. But it ended up being more like six weeks. We decided during that time what a cool series this would be and just kind of show everyone everything that we've done to the airplane. So in this series, we're gonna go through everything from changing the tires to redoing the brake system, to rigging the airplane, doing the condition inspection, everything it took to get this airplane that's been sitting for a lot of years back up in the air. And the last video is going to be it flying, get some air to air shots, and just seeing the beauty of a Great Lakes biplane in the air. It's a little technical at first, so bear with us. So, <laughs> come along on this journey of getting yeah. this Ranger-powered Great Lakes biplane back up in the air. Back up in the air. Any inspection on an airplane, you really, number one thing is got to repack the bearings, clean them out. These tires are original from 1984, so we're going to change them out. That's first, Janie. First, we're going to let some air out of the tire. While that is coming out, we're going to go ahead and take this apart. This airplane has a very special history. There is a photo of Cliff sitting in this particular airplane when he was 10, 11. It flew every weekend at an air show for 10 years. some cold water. Cue in the tire. It's the closest to a bush plane we're gonna get for a little bit. So, new tire. I'm gonna feel around on the inside. Make sure. There's no burn or sharp object. Tire top. Donut. Oh, man. These have to be torqued to 90 inch pounds. Okay. Next step, bearings. Out of 10, on three, rated what you think this is. I like effectiveness wise? Just overall. One, two, three, Eight. five. Really? It packs the bearing really well, but like it makes a mess inside, so we gotta like take it out and put all the grease back in the bottom. So I'm gonna put this in. Ooh, it's good though. All right, seven out of 10. I still go with eight because it's fun, but it is messy. So, we gotta do the bounce test. Make sure everything's good with it. Uh oh. Oh. At this point, we did it all over again with the second main, taking it apart, inspecting, packing the bearings, and putting the new tube and tire on.
The most important part of any tailwheel airplane is the tailwheel. Important to keep the tire good, keep the actual tailwheel service, keep your springs good. This one's been sitting for a little bit. We're gonna pull it all apart, clean it, service it, change the tire, put it all back in, test it, and go fly. So as far as the tailwheel part, it's greased, it's checked, it's serviced, it brakes freely, nice, it locks nice. We need tire clips, and we'll pull this puppy apart. Tire number three. We got our tail wheel. We're gonna split this rim, clean it up, put the new tube on, put the tire on, seal it back up. Third tire done. Most fun one. As far as the tail wheel portion of this, we're done. Wheels are done, we have brakes. So these are the calipers, Cleveland 30, 75. At one point we had a little leak in the left side out of the master cylinder, which is this one. And then we kind of just decided, well, everything's apart. We're doing new brake lines anyway, because that was also leaking a little bit. Why not just clean up everything, redo everything and make it all new? So pretty simple, literally just have the caliper your little puck, the O-ring. This goes in and out. The pads, we'll put new rivets on. Um, some hardware, those are good. We have our O-ring right here. And these should be fairly simple. All right, now we're gonna work on the brake lining. So these are riveted on and basically just have to pop the rivets out, put the new shoes on and uh, that's it. We have been out of commission for a week with our seasonal colds. We currently have our brake master cylinders for the airplane. It's tow brakes. They're Cleveland 10-5s, I think, but the parking brake was cut off, so it's just this. This one is all taken apart. It's all cleaned. It's all checked and looked at and everything. So we're gonna put it back together. We got our rebuild kit. Only place I could find it was from Plane Parts. Cool guy. I ordered it, called like three days later, asked where it was, and he said that they didn't get it, but then he next day aired it to us, so. How strange it is to think we've all evolved. Just a burst of we are using mineral spirits here to clean the components of the master brake cylinders. Replacing all the gaskets was a very delicate process, but so satisfying knowing that we will have a freshly rebuilt system. Probably one of like the biggest changes we're making so far. We have the master cylinders rebuilt, calipers are on, we have all new fittings. Horrible part about 90 degree fittings is having to either make the crucial decision of do a full 360 or leave it where it is. So we're gonna put these in. We put it in the plane, marked it where it has a nice angle so we can tighten it to that point. We'll put it in, install it. We already checked the, like the clearance and stuff, had to move the reservoir part a little up and uh, we should be able to get this 
permanently installed back in the airplane today and uh, possibly bleed it. We'll see. All right, is the pedal flipped sideways? <laughs> Got some. Yeah, so I'm gonna go slow so that hopefully gets like bubbles out. It was at this point that we started having some issues with the brakes. No matter how many times we bled them, we could not get all the air bubbles out and it just wasn't building pressure the way it should. We finally determined that the eighth inch tubing was a bad idea. There was just not enough flow pressure through the tiny tube. I think that's, that's been our culprit. This was a painful one since we suspected from the beginning that quarter inch tubing would be better, but we ordered from Aircraft Spruce and after installing and bleeding the brakes, it worked perfectly. We gotta service the strut, the landing gear strut. Basically works like an earlier strut, 5606 fluid in there, spring in the bottom. Packing should not be leaking, so we're gonna lift it up. We're gonna fill it up with fluid. We're gonna put it back down, and that's kind of the waiting game, but there's never been any puddles under it before. One of the weird things is you can't just jack the plane up. You have to lift the plane up. So basically this part right here is the structure of the plane. We have our strap. We're gonna wrap it around. Now we've never done this before so hopefully it works. <laughs> I was not expecting Wow. No, there's no excuse to come bouncing it in. But it like, holds in the air, so it only has a little bounce for me. Watch your eyes. We really should put our safety goggles on, shouldn't we? Let me go get them. Oh boy. What? Paper towels. Oh. Oh. Here, 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 here. Oh. 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 Next video, we are going to be explaining what this weird tent is under the airplane. Spoiler, it's for a fabric repair. And covering the inspection on the airframe, rigging the aircraft, and installing a new fuel gauge. We are going to be uploading the second in our five-part video series next week, so please hit subscribe and notify so you don't miss it. See you next time. <laughs>